to smell the playoffs, boys. Mm. A little Matrix music for you right there. Let's get it going. A lot to cover. Little time. I'm running a couple minutes late. I apologize. Just so you guys know that any predictions that I make today are not based on what's happening on the TV. My phone says 104. I haven't even looked at the TV yet. That's what time this video is recording. Just want to get that out there so I can't be accused of having prior knowledge of anything that's going on. So let's get it started. Welcome to the semifinals of the fantasy football playoffs. Very exciting. Um, very quickly, I'm going to touch on last week's matchups and the intense text message thread that ensued between one of the most incredible games I have witnessed as a fantasy football player between Eamon and Angel, ending in the tie. Um, you know... I had the sneaking suspicion that maybe that was coming. You could kind of see it trending that way. I really did not think Steven Jackson was going to do anything of significance at that part. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It happened. Um, I know some people were upset about the way that it ended, particularly Angel, because he was on the losing side with the tiebreaker situation. As I said in the text message thread, that rule was established back in August when I set the league up. Um, ESPN only gives you five or six options to choose from, running back, quarterback, wide receivers, um, and I think points points for head-to-head -head, um, are the options that you can choose for the tiebreaker. So, you know, certainly I don't mind changing that moving forward. Running backs is what we've always done in, in other leagues um, that I've been a part of, so that's just what I set the, the default tiebreaker to for this year. Now... I know Angel had said that maybe he would have structured his team differently knowing that the tiebreaker was running back heavy. I mean, everyone has two, so you're playing two, and then it's just a matter of did you put an extra one in your flex. I mean, Eamon just happened, had a great running back day. Um, that day with Bell just absolutely went off, and he was just going to be untouchable from, from that standpoint. Um, so let's see here. Let's just do some quick, some quick math just to put it out there. So, so far this season, there have been 65 matchups. A tie occurred in one of them. That is roughly a 0.01% chance that you will have a tie in your matchup. So, it would be highly unadvisable to structure your team around any type of tiebreaker situation, whether we make it the quarterback next year, wide receivers, running back. They happen so infrequently um, that the only reason that rule is in place is for this very occasion, and you you have to you just can't be upset if that's kind of how it goes. Obviously, it pisses you off. You're on the losing end, and maybe if you didn't know that's what the rule was. But like I said, they've been there since August. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, congrats to Eamon. Moving on, Ted and Angel playing in a very spirited matchup this week. There is a C note on the line. We'll see where that ends up going, if it's out west or if Angel is sending that money back to Ted, which clearly will be spent on beer within 10 minutes of arrival. But to that point, and Angel brought up some other good points in the text message thread, I have no problem changing whatever rules you guys want for next year. Um, you know, the tiebreaker one is definitely one we'll get up there for, for vote. Right now, the one that's up there for a vote is the scoring system moving to a decimal, which I prefer as well. Um, I just didn't want to do that out the gate with this league because I didn't know how intense it was going to get, if people were really going to pay attention, if they really gave a shit about it. So I've already voted to, uh, to go forward with the decimal system. That being said, I posted that last Tuesday, and I said in the text message thread, we've got a week to vote, and we need about three-quarters of the league to vote, um, before I would make a change for next year. And we're all still playing and focused on football. Now is the time to make those changes. Well, I checked this morning. Only three people have voted out of the ten, and I'm one of them. So I don't know who the other two people are, but only three have voted. So I don't have a problem making changes, but I'm not going to change anything if people aren't going to participate and vote on the poll. So if you want a decimal scoring system, you better vote by Tuesday, otherwise I'm taking it down, and that's... I don't think it's a lot to ask if you guys want changes to give you a week to log on to ESPN and, and vote. So that's how I'm going to do it. And we'll do a new topic every time. Then we'll do the tiebreaker option. 
Um, what was the other one I'd written down? Oh, PPR. A lot of people like doing PPR, maybe half point, full point, um, points per reception. We can do that. Um, I think next year I'm going to change it. No divisions, no east and west, just a top, you know, top 10 as far as that goes. Doesn't affect too much, um, especially in the way of seedings or anything like that. But, you know, with just 10 teams, this isn't the real NFL. We don't need to have divisions. We can just have the, you know, top teams, list them, run them down, points for, points against, and just, you know, have at it. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of other things that we can do. And certainly if someone wants something specific, you know, post it on the thread, we can address it and go from there. But like I said, you know, to get six or seven people to vote, um, to make a change, because at no point, I'm not going to make a change to a rule with only three people voting, and then next year something happens like this, you know, tiebreaker situation, and someone's, you know, pissed off about it and said, oh, I never agreed to that. Well, guess what? You didn't log on and vote. So, tough luck. That's all I'm going to say. I'm a little fired up about it. Let's move on. Get focused. Current events. Big things happening with the league. A lot of guys doing big things. Angel, a Cardinals game and a UFC event, I think, in less than a week. Kid is living the dream right now. I'm at home Sunday afternoon drinking gluten-free beer with my four-week-old son. I probably won't leave the house all day. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sleeping in shifts at this point, napping whenever I can. Um, so just completely different lifestyles at this point from uh, from Angel there. G-Man with some big news on the text message thread. Settling down to some extent with a female. Very happy for you, Gerard. Well done, sir. Looks like you guys are having a good time. That was good to see. Um, what else happened last night? Some of the Portland, Maine crew out and about in Kennebunk at the Fire and Ice. Um, I don't know if it was really a party or what it was last night, but it looked pretty good. A lot of bonfires. Ted, I know that made you happy. It looked like there was a lot of ice kind of kegs of beer and, lot, you know, some whiskey and stuff there. I was a little jealous about that. Um, I was up with Griff watching Wolf of Wall Street late last night, texting with um, some of the group members. Ted said they got kicked out. Need some further explanation on that, Ted. Maybe you can either post a video or, you know, let us know in the text message thread what's going on with that. Um, and myself and Wit last night, again, Saturday night, big night, hung out at the house. Wit was aggressive with the pumping yesterday afternoon. We built up a reserve. We popped a bottle of wine. <laughs> And she had, and she had some, and she had some wine last night. I had some Glenfiddich, so it was good. Griff was not affected because he did not drink any of the milk with the wine in it. So it was, it was a good night all around. Glad everyone had a good time, and let's move on. Beer of the week. Ted brought this over for me a little while ago. The Glutenberg. It's the Red Ale. I may have already featured it, but when you are drinking gluten-free beer, there's not a lot of options to feature for beer of the week. I ran out pretty quick, so I can't remember if I already did this one. 5% uh, World Beer Cup Gold Award. I don't really know what that means. Uh, maybe they have their own category, and there's the best out of six choices. It is good. It's actually it's got a nice, almost like a nice chestnut-type clarity to that there. That's pretty good. Um, not too much head on it, if you're that type of guy. But overall, it tastes good. Tastes the closest to an actual regular beer that I'm used to. And here we go. Matchups and predictions. I've already talked way too long. I'm just going to do semifinal matchups. Um, Eamon and Gerard. This is going to be this is going to be a good one. We've got Peyton versus Big Ben. I think that comes down to a push. Peyton, the better quarterback. Um, However, Roethlisberger's got a nice matchup at the Falcons. Plenty of weapons. I think they actually score pretty close to each other. Le'Veon Bell and Marshawn Lynch. I mean, two studs. Not much I can really say about that. They're both going to perform. Steven Jackson and Eddie Lacy. Clearly, the checkmark goes to Lacy on that one. Um, Edelman versus Cobb. Maybe a little bit closer than what you would expect. Edelman, you know, a key piece in that Patriots offense. But Cobb, Rodgers is just airing it out and... He could have a, a big game today. Decker versus Sanders. Got to go with Sanders there. <sighs> Julius Thomas versus Witten is a close one. Thomas has had some, you know, some misses here recently. Um, so that's in Witten. Big game at Philly. 
almost, you know, kind of for the division here. Romo was going to be looking his way. That's at the beginning of the year would have been a no-brainer. Thomas, without question. I think it's a little bit closer um, this late in the season. Flex spots, Chris Ivory and LaFell. I think I'm going to give that to Gerard on LaFell. I think the Pats are just going to put it to the Dolphins today. They're pissed about week one. They want to lock up the AFC East like we do every single year, and they are just going to throttle the Dolphins today. Can't wait on the TV now, um, and that's how we're going to go about it. Defense, Lions and Colts, you know, both pretty pretty impressive. Lions on paper, certainly the better defensive team, um, but the Colts, they can get some turnovers, so let's see let's see how that goes. Gerard is a double-digit underdog to Eamon, which I, looking at their players, I don't quite understand. Um, I'm going to go with Gerard. I mean, he's, he's, you know, supposed to lose by 20-something points, but I'm going to pick Gerard in this matchup. He moves on to the championship, the number one seed in the championship. Let's see how he does. Uh, incomplete. Okay. Next matchup, Malik and Max. Good matchup here. Um, I give the checkmark to Malik on the quarterback with Luck over Flacco. Down to the running back, Arian Foster um, going against Blunt. Foster, certainly the better talent there. Hill versus Chris Johnson. That's a pretty shitty matchup there. Um, Geo is expected to play a little bit. And Chris Johnson is so hit or miss with the Jets, and the Jets are abysmal that I call that a push. Then you go down to Megatron and Thomas. I consider that a push as well. I mean, just, again, both superstars. There's not a lot of comparison there. Stills versus Watkins. Stills is such a home run hitter. Um, If you look all 12, 13 weeks so far this year, he averages a big game every six games, and then he has five terrible games of, like, less than four fantasy points. Well, he just had his huge game two weeks ago, so guess what? He's not having another big game at all this season, so he's all done. Um, so I guess I'm going to go with Watkins there. I give the edge to Max. Then we go down to flex um, tight end spots, Olsen versus Graham. Graham has been inconsistent this year, just brutal for what the value you spend on him in the high draft pick. Olsen, not a bad play. Unfortunately, Cam Newton got a little reckless this week, rolled his truck over in North Carolina, not playing, and I think that will affect Olsen to some extent. Flex spots, Kelsey. Um, a little bit of a weak flex play for Malik. He doesn't have a lot of other options, unfortunately, versus Max. Pick has got uh, Moncrief. A nice play. Similar home run threat like um, Stills, though. He's either going to get you 30 yards in a couple of receptions or he's going to go for a buck 20 in a touchdown. Um, there's no middle ground with him. So I give the check to Moncrief because I think he's a better home run threat there. Defense, Jets versus Broncos. Consider that a push. Again, the higher seed is a double-digit underdog. Um, This one I can see a little bit more. It's a little bit closer. But I think at the end of the day, um, I think Max is going to squeak it out. I think he's got more consistency on his team um, than what Malik has. If Malik gets a couple of guys to go off for the home runs that they need, he'll take it down. But I think, you know, just looking at the, the lineups, I think Max gets it done this week. The number two seed in the championship going against the number one, HIV versus Johnsons of Anarchy in the championship next week. You heard it here first. That's the prediction. Let's see what happens. I probably jinxed you both. I apologize in advance. Um, I believe that's all I got for you today, boys. I will send another text message to the group alerting you of the voting. Get in there, vote. This is your league. Vote for the changes. Vote for what you want so that way we can customize it to make everybody happy and make this, you know, a great fantasy football league. Cheers. Enjoy your Sunday. The baby is being fed. I need to attend to him. We need to get some laundry done. Big day in the Holmes household. I will catch you guys later. Cheers.